that be Fam, I have, let me see. I could probably count my male friends and it's not more than 10. And it's probably only five that I actively speak to like often. Well, I'll most of my you. days, most of my days are spent talking to women. Because I feel like I have to help. Well, I have to offer guidance and direction and information and into the male, I'll male say, train of thought. Because y'all be fucked up. Like y'all be getting played by here like we go. the dun niggas. Like y'all be getting played by the muddiest of niggas, and then y'all be home like, oh my god. Y'all, okay, when, and when you say y'all, it's them. Definitely not me, but yeah, no, I'm not speaking directly to you. Right. Okay. I'm just talking about the women that go for a particular type okay never deviate from that type this is funny because this is exactly what's said about me but <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> this is exactly you and then expect them to be different but you know what but when that's said about me it's wrong because most of the things about you is wrong. most of the things that are ever said about me mandy are said from the public perspective or from that point of view Okay. So if you look at it from that from that point of view, yeah, I probably only fuck Spanish girls. If you know me in real life, right? Then you kind of know what the vibes is. I... Hey, I... hey, some of my baddest, baddest black mamas is oh man. Oh, Steve, oh. when I think of you, I don't, I don't even go to race. I just go to body builds. Why? I think the body builds of the girls that you like are all like I don't really judge it by race or color or ethnicity. You just have a tight body wise. Thick, no stomach, big titties, big booty, thighs, like but you don't, have a body. But don't most men have a body type? Um, I know guys that like no, that I would say no. Dirt. I would say no. Yeah, I would say a lot of men just like pussy. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't me. I, I would say I would say a, a, a lot of men just like pussy more than body builds. Because I ain't going to hold you. There was men da dating publicly mad skinny bitches. And when I was 80 pounds bigger than what I am now, niggas was fucking the big... Niggas loved me when I was big. They keep telling me to eat. Time niggas out. like big bitches. I like big bitches. No, like really big. Like Me too. Like really... No, you... They be big but don't have stomachs. I'm talking about niggas that want to touch it, touch on your stomach and rub your rolls. And Do you know? That's me. Do you know how much my bitch weigh? But she's five. She's tall. Do you how know how much she weigh? Her titties weigh half her size. Do you know how much she weighs? What's the What's the weight? It's a big bitch. But she's tall. She's five I'm seven. About, I, so see, you can't call. Girls built like her would not be considered big. And you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about big, Joe. You know what I'm talking about. Amber Rose. Hey, actually, Amber, hey, Amber, I love you. Yeah. Listen, is Amber Rose a big bitch? Amber Rose is tall. Amber Rose wouldn't be a big bitch. Yo, you keep saying tall, and I'm asking you about big bitches. Tell me what's, what's a big bitch. And, okay, and there's a difference if you, between if you're a big bitch man, and a big bitch. I'm, this is my friend Mandy, and we're using the word bitch loosely. We respect sorry, women. Yeah, sorry and, about the word bitch. No, the word bitch is fun until okay. a girl comes and says, why are you calling niggas bitch, girl bitch? It's like, Sam, get out of here. So they're thick and they're big. And then, I mean, it, it, okay, fine. Do, do we want to see? I don't want to call them obese. But there's a difference between Amber Rose and Lizzo. And who? You're calling, you're calling Amber Rose and Lizzo, they would both be big bitches. Basically with, with your terminology. No, Amber Rose is not like Lizzo, is what I'm saying. I'm talking about the Lizzo big bitches. I'm not talking about Amber Rose. Well, you know? why are we talking about that? Because that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm 5'1". I weighed 230 two years ago. And I'm saying... Hey, let me, before you finish, let me That's tell you. That's what I'm talking about. I seen a picture of Lizzo the other day where I was like, I'll bust your big ass one time. See, look, now now everyone's using these other words. Someone said she's a heavy one. No, we're not. <laughs> when Amber when Amber is in her thick stage, because she might not be big now. I haven't seen her. She just had a baby. She's trying to get that shit. But when I was Amber... about to say, I don't even like that people refer to her thick stage because every time she's been, I would assume, bigger has come from having a baby 
And a lot of people do that too. Like she gained weight from a baby. She's lost it fairly soon and, or just kept the curves, but that's still not big. Let me get back to, let me get back to, uh, I want to interject because you were grouping, you were grouping a lot of men together. And I think there's an important okay. distinction to be made. Yes, there's a whole bunch of niggas that just want some pussy. Yes. In my belief, those are not people that are accustomed to pussy. Okay. Like, at the risk of sounding arrogant, I don't really ever go out of my way for vagina because I, there's never been a shortage of vagina in my entire life. So the way that I view it is a little too... You disagree what? I disagree. Um, and if you want to sit here and keep talking about, you know, the Spurs and all that, nigga, I know the bodies that James Harden has taken down, and let's not. He's someone who can get... A lot of these athletes can get any pussy they want, and I guarantee you they knocking down a whole bunch of different type of pussies, a whole bunch of different built bitches. Yes. If this quarantine has taught you nothing else, Mandy, it should teach you that most of the NBA niggas are doofs. You love calling them doofs. Look at them. What about looking at them? There's no, some of them are, are don't, 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 don't. Not call all. Doofs now. I'm not saying all. Not all. But if you do that, then there's a lot of men who are dupes. You don't have to bring it to just them being athletes, being dupes. I do have to bring it to that because what money does is highlight what already exists. Okay. So if you were a doof and now you have a hundred million dollars, now your doofiness is on full display for the world to fucking see. You're a doof. That's one. Two, the problem that with women you bring up James Harden, and James yeah. Harden is that nigga. Let me he be clear. is that, no, he literally James is Harden nigga. is that nigga. Let me be clear in that. Not saying he's not. But if I look at James Harden like life, I don't think James Harden was always that nigga. I don't think that throughout his entire life, he has never, uh, he has never been at a shortage for women. I don't think that's true. I think there's, well, let me finish. Go ahead. I think there's been a shortage. So now when you come up, yeah, I fully expect you to find yourself and sow, bro, uh, sow your seeds and fucking really go about your shit because now you have the world in the palm of your hands. Drake. Drake is a beast. Drake is that nigga. Right. Drake is undisputably, undeniably that nigga. Guess what? I don't think that Drake was always that nigga. I think that they may I think that there were a few years where Drake may have had a hard time attracting the women that he wanted to attract. Drake was on Degrassi and could have bagged anybody on MySpace when he was a fucking teenager. It's not true. Yes, he could have. It's not true. He could You're have wrong. bagged a lot of girls. And then also in bringing up the athletes, you can't look at before they got their money because a lot of them are getting money at Mandy, 21, at 22, Mandy, very young. Mandy, you always have to look at before because... How, you looking at teenagers then? No, no, no. Baby, I go, the, I, baby, 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 I go way deeper than that. I Fuck your teenage years. I go to your household. Whoever you are today started in your house. Okay. Tell me about your relationships with your, your relationship with your parents. Tell me about your relationship with your siblings. Tell me about what you were subjected to coming up. Tell me if there was some trauma that you were, uh, that, that you were, uh, around, like, fuck teenage years. This starts in the home. So you telling me about Drake on Degrassi when he was 13 or 14, all I hear in Drake's music is dad issues, issues with wanting someone and them not wanting you, which to me relates right. to abandonment issues. And when you have abandonment issues, you cling harder. You cling You cling on to people. You don't want them to go. No, don't leave. I need you. You don't. It's in every song. If we could really have a true conversation about James Harden right now, I would tell you something. But I won't. <laughs> but this stuff... 
this stuff is true. That's how I look at all people, the household. It's not who you are now and what no, you I have now. That. You think it's just got money. You're right. Y'all just got some money. That tells me nothing about you. Hey, I tell bitches, well, I used to tell bitches, hey. You used to tell <laughs> Well, not bitches, but I used to tell people, like, or my friends, like, I don't know how to have money. Okay. I have it. Same. And I have no idea how to have it. So it's like, you're talking about a lot of learning curves that men have to go through. And for me, and I only speak for me, women, because they're focused on one thing, seem to miss all the other things that they may need to focus on. Like, hey, the changes that your partner or your boyfriend or the person that you like is going through. What is he experiencing in the world? What does he have to relearn or learn now? What does he have to get acclimated to? What does he have to acquiesce to? And a lot, large part of that, if you get with that, if you start getting into that, it ain't going to be no time to talk about the bitch on Instagram that's leaving a comment underneath my picture. Right. It's not going to be no time to talk about uh, the bitch over here that is in a bathing suit that you think I like because you think you know the woman that I'm attracted to. So now you're going to beat me down for the next moment about this bitch I'm not even thinking about. I'm thinking about where to hide money, put money, pay the taxes, fucking go out on the road while every rapper is getting killed and shot. And like, like, what are we talking about here? So if you can't even match me on objective, like if we can't get on the same page about agenda, then how do you want me to get on the same page with you about some of the minuscule shit that you be talking about this house? Not this house, but you know what I'm saying. You, you done? You, you, th- that was really great. That monologue was amazing. I'm hurt. It was amazing. No, I, and I, I, I feel it. I, I felt it. I felt it through the screen. I'm hurt. I felt because, it through the screen. I'm hurt because there's a bunch of y'all beautiful women out there that run around saying, yo, I can't find a man. I can't find a man. Niggas ain't shit. Niggas ain't shit. I fuck niggas. Niggas is fuck niggas. Niggas ain't doing what I need them to do. And it's a, and it's a whole bunch of niggas out here. I won't say me, but it's a whole bunch of niggas out here that's dying to have women support. So here's the thing. I'm going to agree to disagree only on the basis of the fact that you brought up all of these abandonment issues, all of these things that you have to work, not even you, that men have to work through because maybe they were abandoned. Maybe they don't know how to deal with money. All of these things that yet you pin on us as having these abandonment issues when all we want is a text back, when all we want is a little bit of attention. And you're making the excuse that Um, men can... Wait, wait, wait. You're making making it that men have all of these, these things to go through and that we should be considerate of such. But as soon as we want just a little bit of something, you bring up the abandonment issues and the daddy issues that a woman may have. Hurt people hurt people. So at the end of the day, if I have to work through... The, the issues that you have, why is that also not reciprocated in dating? Why is that not reciprocated in you communicating that these things are how you feel? And when I'm like just expressing myself in a certain way and you know it's coming from the same hurt that you're going through, why that can't, why we continue to hurt each other if we literally want the same thing out of each other? Well, number like, that's one, what, that's what it doesn't make sense. Well, number one, let me just start. Let me address that and start with every day that I wake up on this earth, my number one focus is self-improvement. Yes. Part of self-improvement is self-awareness. Got you. So now before, before you insert a woman into my infrastructure, I have already begun to do some things for myself that improves me moving forward. Sometimes, sometimes that's not the case with the opposite sex because they are busy trying to improve you. Sometimes. Because I do think it's a woman's job to improve upon a man. But how they go... You you think it's a woman's job to approve... Improve. Approve a man? In, improve. Improve a man. That didn't come out of her vagina. So yeah. like, so like building them up. Improve. Improve. 
You, okay. you, you can interpret that. Uh, yeah, I'm interpreting it. But I'm saying improve. But hold up, I had another point to get to. Um, the self-awareness, self-improvement point, right? I and think then, that you should improve the woman just as much as she improves you, but... Oh, okay. that, was, that was the other point. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not just our, wait, our job to improve the, a man. Baby, yes, we have to improve each other, but that okay. particular sentence was about women. Yes, we have okay. to improve each other. Um, my second point, I'm not attacking people for having abandonment issues. Okay. People can have abandonment issues. I'm attacking people for how they deal with their abandonment issues. So when you say you just want a text back, there's nothing wrong with just wanting a text back. We all want a text back. How you go about... Okay. How you go about responding when the universe does not give you what you were looking for is where I start saying abandonment issues and toxic behavior is coming coming into play. And listen, I'm not just assessing that with women. I assess it in my own life as well. Like, many of us have abandonment issues. I think I probably handle mine a little bit differently because, and I mean, are we getting this deep right now? Fuck it, I'm trying to make this, like, really quick. Like, <laughs> my dad wasn't there. Right. Like... Neither was mine. My dad... He was as an my, ATM. My dad was different. on all of the drugs. My dad was in jail. My dad was homeless. My dad was going fucking through it. Right? Mm-hmm. Know what my mom did with me? What? Hey, pray for your dad. Hey, dad is all right. Just keep him in your prayer. Dad is doing good. She protected him or me right. from whatever the fuck was really going on, which seems like a real small thing. But when I was 13, 14, and my dad came back around, what it did for me was I wasn't angry. I wasn't mad. Yes. I had had this abandonment issue. Right. But my perspective was, damn, my dad popped up right when I need him to be here, which is now. And that kind of helped me with how to deal with things throughout life. Again, it starts in your home. It starts in the household. What I find is a lot of people, not women, because this is not gender specific. a A lot of people don't have that story. A lot of people are really angry about something that happened in their home. And because they never address it, they take it out into the world. And normally what happens is they dump these things on a significant other or the opposite sex, sometimes subconsciously. But yeah, if everybody just deals with their own shit, we would probably have better correspondence as a uh, Lovers, partners, friends, friends, all of it. We Thank wouldn't right. be so angry. Here I, I play some music, Joe. God damn, this got deep. I'm sitting here. God damn, we got deep with it. Oh, you, know, you know I get deep everywhere but the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I wish they knew. God damn, you turn into therapist Joe all the time, or then just be like, see, that's why you need therapy. That's why you need therapy. That's why you need therapy. You need therapy. No, but no, I mean, you're definitely right. I mean, it's something that I, I'm definitely working on too. Um, my, I mean, my relationship with my dad was a little different than that. I mean, I got the, the mom and dad who went back and forth, who, like, my dad updates my mom every chance he could to show that she wasn't doing what she should be doing as a mom and vice versa. So, I mean, I got a different, you know, and now, now that I'm an adult, I can view them as adults and the decisions they made and judge them based on that. Um, but, yeah, no. I really didn't. I really didn't mean. I really didn't mean for this to get deep. I thought we was gonna talk about sex and fucking and sucking dick. We can talk about 
sex and fucking later. I'm actually about to get dressed. Um, I, I gave myself a schedule during the quarantine, so I have certain closets to clean out um, and, and tasks and chores to get done. How many times do you have sex on the couch? Oh, I've stuck dick, no, I've only stuck dick on my couch. I haven't had sex. Hey. <laughs> I haven't had sex on my couch. I'll move it straight to the carpet and I'll lay down some shit. We not fucking on my couch. Okay, good. Like I get really like wet and I don't need I don't want I don't want juices on my couch. Juices. And I don't, want, I, I don't I don't want juices on my couch. And I like for people to sit in my living room and I just feel bad knowing that my juices are on the couch if they sitting right there, so I just stay away from from my couch. However, I think my friend did fuck on my couch and I had to cuss her out for it. Like, I don't... Your friend I, definitely fucked on your couch. But I set my friends up in my guest room. I have condoms, toys in the box. I have chocolate paint, massage oil. And I be letting them know when they come to New York, they're more than welcome to, to fuck in my guest room. Wait, hold up. Chocolate paint? Yeah, it's like edible body paint. Tell me more. Body, tell, me more. <laughs> tell, me, tell me more about it. You don't know edible body paint, yo. <laughs> what do you think? I can't fuck. Well, I mean, I, it's not that I don't think you can fuck, but you're older, so I think that you probably just go about sex real, like, regular. I don't see you being kinky, Joe. I don't see you pulling out a sex swing. I see you getting your dick stuck and fucking a bitch from the back and coming. That's how I envision. <laughs> no, listen, no, no I don't, I don't envision you being kinky with toys and shit. No comment, Queen. I can't, I can't expose myself on the internet that way. Well, so the next time we talk, I can ask you all the sex questions and see your thoughts on sex. Yeah. Why don't you get dressed, get yourself together, see if you can find some eyelashes laying around the house. I hate... You know what? Don't do this. Don't do this. And if you can... You know, maybe we'll hop back on a little later. I'll be here, free and available. <laughs> and, you all right. and you can ask me all the questions you like. I hate you. All right, Joe. Bye. Bye. Bye.